heard of Tower 2, right? But not many of you heard of Building 7, which is interesting because the BBC reported Building 7 had collapsed 30 minutes before it collapsed. The reporter reporting on Building 7 was standing in front of a skyline that contained Building 7. And she said, yes, uh, news media, news reports are coming in now that Building 7 has collapsed. Building 7 has collapsed and at Rockefeller Center, one Rockefeller place, and has collapsed into its own footprint. Building 7 is now gone. And behind her is Building 7. So you have to start asking yourself, what happened that day? That there was a building that had fallen, and the news media, CNN, Fox News, BBC, all reported it as having fallen before it fell. Why don't we take a look at it? Chuck Stanley almost fell. Stamped like a Jew at Auschwitz. They had, they had, well, like foxes too, right? Chuck yeah. Instead of fuck yeah, it's Chuck yeah. America, Chuck yeah. Gonna save the mother Chuck and Day now. Chuck 2016. I want to believe Chuck. Good. It's gonna be like when it's hella quiet. Yeah, mm-hmm. where it's like super quiet and just like... And it feels like you're not supposed to. Yeah. And then it just happens. It's awesome. Why does that remind me of like Family Guy in like the cutaway where they're in Anne Frank's uh, attic and then Peter's just eating chips. Uh-huh. Make sure you understand. Yeah. You gotta look your snake off. Phrasing boom. Huh? Phrasing boom. I haven't been recording the whole thing, I just started like three, one. I started four minutes ago. Chuck yeah. Chuck yeah. in Canada? Is that like the new Pearl Harbor? Nobody's ever attacked Canada. Ever. Well, U.S. did once. They lost. Yeah. That's why it was once. Right now they're whales. And they're whales. 
and then you had to go real world because suddenly there was actually explosions there? And he said, yeah, it's really, you know, you're really put to the test when suddenly you have to go into real world. And that's what you've got to remember about all these things that they tell you in the media. In the news media, they will tell you things happen, and there will always be a drill that is happening at the same time. Like on September 11th, there was a drill called Able Danger, where terrorists were to take planes and use them as missiles to fly them into buildings. That's what the, that's the exercise NORAD was conducting on September 11th. That's why NORAD was confused when they said, is this real world or exercise? And they had to say, no, this is real world. So they were confused. It's like all the, anytime you see something in the news media that causes you, causes you fear, because let's go back to the video game. Before you get sucked down the pit of depression that is swallowing your soul right now as you start to realize it's all a lie, it's all a lie, it's all a lie, go back to the video game, it'll make you feel better. In the video game, this is awesome, right? Because in the video game, you're playing what you think is The Sims, and you're like, The Sims is awesome. And then you're like, The Sims just got more awesome. Because they just blew up a city and are telling me lies, and I have to figure out what the mystery is. So if this were a video game, you'd be like, this mystery is awesome. I want to know what this yeah. mystery is. But in order to understand it, you have to really feel, it's okay, I love you still. You don't have to stay. It's okay. The blue pill is not for everyone. <laughs> or the red. I always get confused, I just take both. <laughs> we love you. No, it's not for everyone. Some people are like, fuck you, Chuck. I'm going to keep playing Animal Crossing. Stop telling me the truth. Because sometimes I do feel like that guy at the D&D game who's like, it's a lie. None of you are elder dwarves. <laughs> You're all just pretending.
And he said that because of the plowshares program that the Russian and Americans would share with each other anytime they used nuclear devices for peaceful means, for things like excavation or demolition. And he said he knew that from his experience as a nuclear specialist, having knowledge of the plowshares program, that all large buildings, the UN, the Sears Tower, the World Trade Center, World Trade Center 7, all had nuclear demolition plans in place because you can't build a building without a demolition plan. You can't even destroy a building like World Trade Center 1 or World Trade Center 2 by traditional demolition methods. You would have to use something like nuclear demolition. So what he says happened on that day is a P-700 granite missile, we pick up our, sto we pick up our story when the Pentagon gets struck. A P-700 granite missile, which is a nuclear missile, a Russian nuclear missile, flew into the Pentagon and did not explode nuclearly. And the people in the Pentagon looked at it and went, oh my gosh, there's a nuclear bomb here. What if what hit, and it's bad guys and good guys mixed up in the Pentagon. And the bad guys look at the missile and go, oh God, what if there's nuclear bombs in World Trade Center 1 and World Trade Center 2? If that explodes at that height, it'll destroy all of Manhattan. We better implement the nuclear destruction plan that's already in place and bring those buildings down so it doesn't obliterate all of Manhattan. And good guys and bad guys went, yeah, that seems legit. And they blew up World Trade Center 1 and World Trade Center 2. And then they blew up World Trade Center 7 because that's where everything took place. What's interesting is that you'd find, if there was a nuclear demolition, underneath each building there would be a giant cavern. And there was a great uh, 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 sort of propaganda piece that came out with some geologists saying, yes, we've got these Ice Age caverns underneath World Trade Center 1 and World Trade Center 2. And all the workers at World Trade Center 1 and World Trade Center 2 were going home with these smooth river stones, which were the product of melting stone. But they had these caverns underneath. And you say, well, there'd probably be other things showing us that there was a nuclear demolition there. And you ask yourself, what are all the ground zero first responders dying? They have all, many of them, died of blood-borne cancers. Multiple myeloma, cancers you don't get till you're 79 or 89. And they died of multiple myelomas at 28 and 32. All you have to do is watch and see how many of the first responders are dead and see what they died from. It's gonna be leukemia bone marrow diseases, diseases that are deep radiological diseases. And the first thing controlled demolitions did, and we have pictures of it, the first thing controlled demolitions did on September 12 was to truck in hundreds of thousands of tons of dirt and pour it all over the burning piles. And if you remember those burning piles, they burnt for three months straight and they couldn't be put out. And that's unheard of except in cold seas. So the story is that that missile, and the interesting thing about the P-700 granite missile is that its final move before it explodes, it's designed to kill ships, is it drops 8,000 feet of altitude in a 270 degree turn and strikes at what's called the waterline. And if you know about where the Pentagon was hit and what the plane did that hit the Pentagon, it dropped 8,000 feet in a 270 degree turn in a move that no pilot in Pilots for 9-11 Truth has ever been able to replicate on a simulator. That's what that missile did. So that's maybe what happened that day. Maybe. Or maybe it's all a lie. So that's 9-11. The truth! I laugh at it. I laugh at it all the time. 9-11 is funny. <laughs> you are most welcome. Chuck, yeah. Chuck, yeah. It, Chuck. Yeah, it is an inside job. It's definitely an inside job. Let's, let's pause here for 9-11 questions, and then we're going to move on to happier times. Go here. Uh, Belgium? I haven't, I haven't, like, now, when things happen in the news media, when things happen in the news media, I go, I'll check into that later, but if it's mainstream news, it's probably a total lie. And if you want to know that the mainstream news is a total lie, I'm going to show you in a minute with the deepest, sorest, tiniest little dead kindergarten classroom part of your heart. But let's go with more 9-11 questions here. Yes. No, Pikachu, I'm pointing to you. Okay, I got to catch them all too. What's your name? 
words of Esther. Yeah, absolutely. The tritium levers were about a thousand times more than they should have been, as independently verified by three different university scientists. Also, why didn't they build on those sites for that many years? Do you know what's over the actual sites where they were? Water features. Do you know what the best remediative uh, uh, thing you could do for radiation is water? Yeah, yeah. And an underground nuclear blast would contain most of the radiation underground. Let's go with Hattie McGurlington back there, I guess. showed you that the press announced the buildings being destroyed 
half hour before they were destroyed. So they can definitely be complicit in the conspiracies. And the idea that hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people can't keep a secret, there's a little thing called the Manhattan Project. Yeah, yeah. Sure, ask a lot of questions. That's good. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'
Wait, Sharon, make those buildings disappear. Like I said, I want you to use your reason. And, and the, one of the standard outs for denying conspiracy theories is saying there's no way they can keep it a secret, which is cool. You can hold that. You can hold that belief. And if that is what the belief you want to hold on to, that's great. But I'm asking you to also look at the, the actual facts of things that happen. So now we're going to go to one that is, for some people, even harder than 9-11. It's a fanciful fun day called Sandy Hook. Anyone remember Sandy Hook? Yeah. Yes! Okay, so I'm just going to focus. There's a lot of things to focus on at Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook has one story that everybody should study very closely. And it is the main, one of the main witnesses to Sandy Hook. And his name is Gene Rosen. Here is Gene Rosen's story. Six people in a classroom where their fellow classmates, uh, six children in a classroom where their fellow classmates and teacher were murdered by a gun-wielding madman ran out of the school building to a bus driver, got on a bus, were driven past a fire station, and dropped off on the front lawn of Gene Rosen. Gene Rosen thought it was a play, thought it was a Cub Scout movie, didn't know why the bus driver had an angry voice. Then he took the children into his house and gave them juice and brought down stuffed animals from his grandson that he used to keep for his grandson and had them play. And then after 20 or 30 minutes, the children said, oh no, our teacher's dead. How are we ever going to have a class again? Our teacher's dead. Let's take a look at Gene. Oh, come on, computer. Oh, come on. It's a conspiracy. Let's take a look at Gene Rosen practicing for his news media. Dumb. 